What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mind Something. If you're new here, my name is Jake and in today's video we've got some new GPUs coming out and some are a mystery. And then we have Nexa is getting listed on another exchange and also some more exciting news around Nexa as well as some bad news for MSI. So before we get into it, do me a favor, hit the like and hit the subscribe if you haven't already. Let's go ahead and take a look at the market. So right now, time of recording is 8.01 p.m. on January 9th, 2023. I am missing the national championship game right now to record this video, so I hope you guys appreciate this. But I'll be watching it just as soon as I'm done. Anyways, Bitcoin is coming in at 17216 Ethereum is at 1308 XRP is at $0.35, cents. Cardano is at $0.32, cents. Dogecoin at $0.7.5, cents. Polygon at $0.85, cents. Solana at $16.15, and let's see, we got Toncoin coming in at $2.21, Monero at $159, bucks. let us go ahead and take a look at some of the GPU mineable coins like Caspa. So right now, Caspa is sitting at 0 0.004786, only up about 1% on the 24-hour chart. Flux is currently up about 1.39%, sitting at 52 cents. And we've got Ergo up about 7% over the last 24 hours, actually about 8% right at this very moment at $1.36. And then Radiant is up 20% right now on the 24-hour chart, sitting at 0 0.00089. It was just 9 just a moment ago. And let's take a look at Nexa real quick. Nexa is pumping once again, currently sitting at 359. Looks like we peaked out earlier today at 412 with five zeros in front of it. And I think that has a lot to do with the news that we're about to cover here in just a moment. But before we get to that, let's go ahead and take a look at mining pool stats real quick. Just to take a look at emissions, see if anything's changed. Jericoin is still way up there at $464,000 in emissions at the moment. But got Caspa coming in at $116,000 in emissions. We've got Ergo sitting at $49,000. Flux at $47,000. Uh, you can see Flux difficulty is actually down 10% for the week, which is odd considering we have the halving just right around the corner. And let's see, Ergo is pretty much sideways. And Dogecoin is up about 4.73%. Litecoin is down about 0.77%. Let's go ahead and take a look at what to mine real quick. So a single 3070 at 10 cents per kilowatt hour is actually going to give you some profit on Radiant at $0.02. Cents. Then we've got Alephium at negative $0.04, cents, Ergo negative $0.07, cents, Caspa negative $0.10, cents, Flux negative $0.12, cents, ETHW at negative $0.13, cents. and how about Nexa? So we have to go to their Discord real quick to find out. And I've already done the math for us, or I haven't done the math, but I put in the numbers here. And right now, a 3070 would get you 34 cents a day in profit, which is incredible considering the amount of hash rate that has just poured on to Nexa over the past few days. In fact, let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. So this is network hash rate. Let's go ahead and take a look at difficulty. So difficulty has gone up from roughly about 22 to 32 since January 4th. And today is what, the 9th, I believe? So in five days, difficulty has gone up, let's see, from 21 to 32. That's significant. Let's take a look at hash rate real quick. So hash rate went from 793 all the way up to 1000 and 0 .0774. So yeah, everybody's pouring on to Nexa on some big news. And let's go ahead and take a look at that announcement real quick. So this is in their Discord, and this is today at about noon. They said, attention Nexa community. 
We have great news to share today regarding our second community initiated exchange listing. On Friday, January 13th, trading for Nexa USDT pair will open on Textbit. Textbit is a top 200 exchange tracked by both CoinMarketCap and CoinGecko and has been trusted for years by traders, miners, investors, and up and coming projects. Listed on Textbit offers, or excuse me, listing on Textbit offers Nexa quite a few benefits. The ability for Nexa to get on popular websites like CoinMarketCap and CoinGecko, the ability for investors, investors and traders to utilize uh, BEP20 USDT or Binance Smart Chain as opposed to USDT Tron on Xbitron. Co-marketing, Nexa and Textbit.io have agreed to co-market the project and listing through both homepage ads and social media campaign, including a Nexa giveaway totaling $500 worth of Nexa. And then volume, Nexa seeks to attract new participants as part of its strategy. It is important to facilitate and increase trading volume. Textbit provides our project a secondary channel to increase overall volumes. Deposits are now live on Textbit. Trading will open on January 13th. Please follow our Discord, Telegram, and Twitter page for up-to-date news regarding the listing and the Nexa giveaway. Special thanks goes out directly to our Nexa Whale community for having funding this exchange listing. And then also, we have Nexa will be having their first ever developer AMA on Wednesday. For the first AMA, we will be doing a recorded format with Paul from Nexa, asking pre-submitted questions to lead developer of Nexa and Bitcoin Unlimited, Andrew Stone. If you have any questions or you'd like our dev team to answer, please submit these in the newly created AMA channel before Wednesday. On Thursday or Friday of this week, the AMA recording will be shared on all our official channels. Well, I had some questions for Paul prior to this announcement that I want to share with you guys. And let's get something straight before we get into these questions real quick. So first of all, I like Nexa. I think it's a pretty solid project. However, you have heard me mention a time or two on the channel that I had some concerns. And those concerns being that there is only one exchange, which now that's changing, and that there was only one miner and there was only one pool. These are some big problems in my opinion. It looks like some of them are getting addressed and I have talked to developers from some of the other miners. I won't say who, but I'll say that other miners will add Nexa very soon. But there's been some roadblocks and those roadblocks have been intentional. And I asked Paul directly questions in regards to that. And you know, I, I hope that my questions didn't come across as accusatory, um, but I'll tell you this, Paul got very defensive and he did not continue to engage with me after a simple response and I did have some follow-up questions and I'm not going to read this entire thing. I think you can pause it and you can read it for yourself, but yeah. I would like to see these questions answered in the AMA. So if you guys have an opportunity to submit your questions in the AMA, please ask them, why did it take so long to get more than one miner and more than one pool and what did they do to address it? Now, again, Paul was defensive in answering that question. However, I know that they were trying to get more developers to create miners for them. But the fact that he didn't really engage with me here uh, was disappointing to say the least. And I would love to see these questions answered in the AMA. Anyways, moving on. Let's talk about something from GamerMel that I saw today. Uh, he says that the RX 7800 XT and 7800, I think as well as the 7700, uh, they have officially announced some of the specs. I think the leaks that we got prior to these announcements uh, were accurate, so there's not a whole lot of big news there. Uh, but hopefully we'll get some more information on launch dates in the coming days. And then since we're on the subject of new GPUs, 
let's talk about this for a moment. So we've got an article from Video Cards talking about NVIDIA to extend its ADA-104 GPU product lineup. Sorry about the noise, guys. So the highly anticipated affordable RTX 4000 series are set to launch in the coming months. The specifications of the RTX 4070 and 4060 series GPUs were revealed a few weeks ago, but just as we get closer to the two possible launches, more unconfirmed specs are now being mentioned by other sources. The RTX 4070 was said to feature an AD 104-250 GPU with 5,888 CUDA cores and 12GB of GDDR6X memory. This graphics card would be limited to 250 watt TDP. Interestingly, a new SKU has just been mentioned featuring the same GPU variant but also lower TDP. At this point, it is unclear what name the SKU would get or which AD 104 250 specs are correct, though. New SKUs provided to the board partners, so here where they are. And then, more importantly, there is a second AD 104 card with an entirely different board SKU number and yet another variant of the graphics processor. A part equipped with AD104-251 is likely to feature minimal changes to the specs, possibly related to the memory configuration. Another possibility is that NVIDIA is simply exploring which design would make it better for the current market. The source provided possible mass production dates for both SKUs, one now being planned for the second half of February, while the other would follow a month later. This suggests a launch in the second quarter. One should note that NVIDIA often feeds conflicting specs to board partners, where we believe this rumor originated from, only to change its plans later on. This rumor certainly does not provide answers, but only more speculation at this point. The good news is that at least two desktop AD104 cards are planned. So here you can see the two new SKUs, and we already have the 4070 and the 4060 Ti SKUs. So what the hell are these? Um, I guess we'll find out pretty soon, but very interesting to say the least. So next, we've got some bad news in regards to MSI Afterburner, in case you guys weren't aware. MSI Afterburner's Russia-based developer, Unwinder, says he might need to drop the project, but MSI says it's working to resolve the issue. The future of popular overclocking utility MSI Afterburner has been called into doubt after developer Unwilder, Unwinder claimed MSI has semi-abandoned the project and has stopped performing its obligations. Unwinder, who Tech Power Up reports in, is Russian national, Alexei no Kalei Chuck suggests that MSI hasn't been paying him for the better part of a year and that he may need to drop development of Afterburner and switch to something else, allowing me to pay the bills. But in a statement, MSI says it intends to continue developing the software. A spokesperson from the company tells PC Gamer that it fully intends to continue with MSI Afterburner. They added that MSI has been working towards a solution and expects it to be resolved soon. Doubts were raised after Nikolachuk wrote that the MSI Afterburner project is probably dead on the Guru3D forums, where he provides development updates for the project. I tried to continue performing my obligations and worked on the project on my own during the last 11 months, but it resulted in nothing being nothing but disappointment. I have a feeling that I'm just beating a dead horse and wasting energy on something that is no longer needed by the company. MSI Afterburner is one of the most popular programs used to overclock graphics cards, allowing skilled users to, among other things, squeeze more performance out of their hardware by increasing clock speeds and adjusting voltages. Despite its name, MSI Afterburner supports both NVIDIA and AMD graphics cards from a variety of vendors beyond just MSI, making it a popular tool 
that you'll often see recommended in overclocking guides like this one from PC Gamer. So essentially what's going on here is politics at play. You know, anything that has to do with Russia is obviously going to get defunded and that's what we're running into. And this is very unfortunate um, for any person trying to overclock their GPU in Windows. Now having said that, for us miners, I think a lot of us had figured out how to properly set overclocks within the bat file, but this is still going to eliminate one of those tools that's probably used on a daily basis. And, you know, if you're not familiar with overclocking your GPUs with the bat file, I suggest that you sharpen those skills and watch some of our previous videos so that you are not in the dark if this does get abandoned. So couple of other things just wanted to mention before we get out of here. Um, if you guys are curious what I'm mining right now, considering that Nexa is pumping and that it is super profitable, in fact, let's go back to this mining profitability here. So I put in my entire farm's hash rate on Nexa, which is about 700 mega hash at about 3200 watts at 7 cents per kilowatt hour that would get me a roughly $8.11 a day in profit or $13.49 a day in revenue. However, even though it is probably the most profitable thing to mine at this very moment, I'm not mining Nexa. I actually switched my rigs over to Radiant. So right now I got about 20, actually I've got more than 20 giga hash. I've got a few others that are running in Windows right now so I'm probably at about 25 giga hash on Radiant at the moment. In fact, let's go ahead and take a look at it. So I'm on Viper Pool. If you guys uh, have not used Viper Pool, I like it and I recommend it. So currently $7.32 a day in revenue. And the reason that I'm mining Radiant at this moment is because the difficulty has just plummeted. So let's go ahead and take a look at it real quick. So difficulty on Radiant right now is 2.815, and it has not been that low since roughly the end of November, November 28th to be specific. So yeah, I'm trying to accumulate as much as that as I can while difficulty is low, and difficulty right now on Nexa is extremely high. It's at an all-time high, in fact. So, yeah, I'm going to continue to accumulate a little bit more Radiant and hope that that pumps in the near future. But, you know me, I'm going to keep playing the game. If, you, <laughs> it's, if everybody switches over to Nexa, I'm going to mine something else. And if everybody switches back to Radiant, then I'll probably switch to something else. That's just the name of the game. Anyways, that's all I got for you guys on this video. Hope you enjoyed the content. Do me a favor, hit that like and hit the subscribe on the way out. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.